of the disciples, even though they had had some very good information from the lady. They still didn't believe. We got that in, in Mark 16 and verse 11. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. But now we go to John 20 and 3. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter. Some folks said that was Mark. You know, he's the youngest one around there. And came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down and looked in, saw the linen, clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then came Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulcher, and see if the linen cloth lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Now, I, I, I told one of you to put the thing on Acts 13 and 30, and let's read that as clearly and as loudly as we can so we can see who raised him. It wasn't no swoon. It wasn't no thing like that. It was who? We, we got it down in Acts 13 and 30. And God has raised him. It was, it was our father as create raised him. And we have to acknowledge that we do not serve a dead God, but a God of the living. And it's very important that at this time he, the Lord lives or he has risen. Also was right in the middle of Passover. And everyone was making their way to Jerusalem to kind of get involved in the Passover. We know that the disciples asked them, Master, where can we take Passover with you? He gave them an explicit instruction. A man did that and other. You go to him and tell him that the Lord has need of it. You'll see a man carrying a water pot, all that stuff. But the bottom line, it was a lot of rhetoric going on right now. They didn't believe. Some believed. Some didn't. So we had these two folks. Let's go to Luke 24. We're going to commence at verse 13. Father, open the heart and mind of thy servant. Let him speak nothing but what thus saith the Lord. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. That's a lot of time in biblical numeric, but we're not going to, we know what three God's perfection, but, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. Yes, you know how folks say, well, I heard this over here, and I heard that over there, but they, they, they're not really focusing on what really happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together, very important, never run by that so easily, where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus is in the midst. Together, now they were okay as long as they were communing and reasoned. So they, they got to get it in the fleshly mind. In the fleshly mind and the spiritual mind, the word says in the book of Romans, can't abide in the same place. Or they lost that. Now, Jesus himself drew near and went 
with him, just walking alongside of the master. And didn't he know? Now, Jesus did this by his own power, but their eyes were holding. In other words, they saw, but they didn't see. If you understand, like a lot of folks see things and they want to be like Simon. I want to buy this. No, you can't buy it. That they should not know him. And as they walked along, and he said unto them, listen very closely, and you'll hear God's grace. And he, sa he said unto them, what manner of communication are these that you have one to another as ye walk? Now listen now. And are sad. What? Why are you sad? There's a lot of folks uh, going to sit in church today because mom and dad and drug them and they're going to be sad, but that's, that's all right. As long as the word of God is there, God will get to and there was no reason for anybody to be sad because what? The Lord lived. He lived. He has risen as he said he would. And what must happen if we shall confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God did what? Raise him from the dead. We're saved. So there's a lot going on here that you and I, as the, as the fig tree generation, have to begin to get it well in our heart. And Jesus just tells me, why y'all y'all saying? And, and they're just walking along. You know how poor me babies can get together and everything's wrong, you know. I got more, you know, I got more whatever than... And and my da 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 and they just gone. And the one of them who whose name was Cleophas answering and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you know what's going on, boy? What's up with that? You know. They kicking it back, but now, he's talking to them on the level that they can understand. Remember now, just like God met you where you were. This is a good example of a God meeting them exactly where they were. Didn't try to dump the truck on them, but he spoke it. Let's let well, the word say. Are you are thou only a strange in Jerusalem? and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days. In other words, we don't heard a whole lot of stuff. You mean you don't know nothing about it? You know how folks say they think they know more in the church. You know, they, them guys really are into a state where many people are. That's why we say clicks in the church. All that stuff come out of that. And I ain't trying to get down on nobody. And and he said unto them, what thing? Ask them a question. Question? And he said unto them, what thing? What thing? And they said unto him, concerning. See? They just forgot a concern about what, what went on and not a conviction about what happened. That is most important. There's a lot of folks concerned about the church. They'll come today, but there's no conviction. Now, we're not picking on anybody because at least they're here. Whoever comes through the door, they must hear the good news. Concerning Jesus, of Nazareth, which was what? A prophet. That's all they had. He met him right. All they looked at him was just like 
some of the other religious agents a prophet. No, he's not. He's the son of the living God. He is God himself, wrapped in flesh. And we beheld the glory of the only begotten Son of Christ, full of grace and truth. Ooh, no. See, they're not dealing with that. They're just, well, we got a little concerned about it because we got to hear what else was going on but we, you know, kind of jump on the bandwagon. You know, uh, Jesus is a prophet, mighty indeed. And see, all of the stuff that, that he has performed right in their eyes, they just said some prophet did some mighty deeds. No man on earth can heal no one. They cannot perform any miracles. It is God that does it. They might be the one that it may came through, okay? But no man can do that. And were before God and all the people and were. They still just say, well, you know, they, he was talking about a little bit of the Bible, you know, and, and, and and, and, and it was before God. We kind of got a hold of that, what people told us. But it was all the people. And anytime you get all the people in something, you're going to get a lot of different interpretations, should I say, instead of just simply believing what the saith the Lord. I don't, I don't care what, there's nothing new. And anytime some preacher or somebody say they got something new to, and they ain't never been hurt. You know right off the way you need to get your hat. You don't want to be in one of the places where I happen to be in my journeys and some guy said, well, I don't understand all this. He's talking about, I ain't supposed to be no woman preacher. I went to a church and a woman come talking about drink this oil and spit it out and throw it up cause so the devil can come out of you. Now, you need to get your hat. That ain't, that is not nothing to do. What kind of this thing? In other words, they want to sensationalize this a bit. In other words, you know how folks say they'll say it just enough to what? Draw you in. And look, and look at this. A prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. But now they shift back to who they really believed in. And how the chief priest, and notice what the hour, what? Ruler. Think about that. Don't give no man that. You respect that position, but I don't rule over you and no man rules over you. God does. You his child. Notice what they said. And how the chief priest and our ruler delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Now let's get something straight. That wasn't none of God's people. That chief priest was appointed by the Roman government. And we know that Kenites, you know, sons of Cain, were hollering, crucify him, crucify him. I, I don't know if y'all had a chance to look at the Bible on the history channel. Ooh, I know they have to take some liberties with regard to promoting movies. But they got the Bible. If you look at that, you think, you know, it just don't make no sense if you're a person who really knows what does say the Lord. And they, they take things and put them where they're not supposed to be out of context, and then they'll move them over here that whatever, but I mean, I'm not going to worry about it because they have to give an account just like these guys did. They're just running their mouth and not really taking time to that so-called reason that they did, and, and, and they began to acknowledge the chief priests and rulers and not acknowledge the potentate, as the Bible said, of the universe. Didn't have now, even though God kind of closed their eyes on a level not to see him, but now they knew enough about the word. 
because they were they running it down here. What G three said and what they did and had and and had and had him crucified. Okay, and crucified him. But look what they said next. But we trusted that that it had been he which should have redeemed yeah, Israel. I, I want him to take get my stuff. Well, I'm gonna hey, let's go. Not counting the fact that he already had done it. Because he was dead. But now he's alive. And he can take care of whatever we have. Now we can't put him in a box and say he just supposed to redeem. Though they are his chosen people. Now listen now. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. He's already said, and they didn't understand. He said, not one of these stones. <laughs> but, you know, I will restore the temple in three days. But they didn't understand that. He thought, he's the temple. And he and, and he done exactly well I know folks and I'm not gonna get in there and try to you know, I ain't trying to prove nothing. Just count the days because if you do it by the uh, the, the moon should I say calendar, it's gonna line up strange. But if you do it by the solar calendar, everything lines up just like God wants it to do. But we have to be one that was simply hear and believe. There's going to be a very important, important point that will come out, and I know why y'all ain't wondering why I ain't done the key verse because it's too important. I said it's too important, and and I want you to see it in the light that Jesus wanted all of us to see it. He wanted them to see it. Now, let's go to the 28th verse. Very important. Take our time and begin to see. And they told him, and, and, you know, they, they had enough knowledge and gossip. And today is the third day since these things were done. So they knew that he said in three days, I'm going to get up. Now, listen to this. Now, this is good. Now. And they drew nigh. I mean, close unto the village whether they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. He said, I'm going to just, y'all going to be really, you know. But they constrained him. That's a powerful word because the Bible said it's the love of Christ that constraineth us. Uh, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. In other words, they, in other words, it's like that in Revelation, he said, I stand at the door and knock, but you have to let me in. And the minute they say, What? Abide with us. Now, I want you to begin to see this. All this lines up with the word. For it was toward, for it is towards evening, and showing a little bit concern, and the day is far spent. And they don't know what they're saying. The end is now, the day is far spent. And we got to come on home to Jesus. And he went in to tarry with them. I remember in in Acts, where he said, go tell them to tarry until I come. Now, don't just think these words are just thrown out, and if you read the words, you know what I'm talking about. And, and tarry with them. And it came to pass. Now, here's where it gets real interesting. If you got eyes to see and ears to hear. And it came to pass as he sat at me with them. 
In other words, we will have a spiritual body. We will remain in the image of him and the angels. So if he both got to come to the but he, he sat with me. He ate with him. Okay. He dared to teach. Lord, I'm like, I hope y'all seen this. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. What that sound like to y'all? There we go. Oh, we call it the last supper, but it's the Passover meal. It's the Passover. I know it's hard for us because we've been told that so many years. But it's the Passover meal. And and the minute he broke bread with them, look what happened. The 31st. And their eyes, are you missing? Were open. I wish we would grab this. I know we just think when we when we commune today that that is just something. No, when you commune with God, He's telling you even your eyes can be open a little more than you thought. You begin to meditate. You begin to see things more clearly. Now, now, and, and you're going to see this really come out of their own mouth because they finally, let's see what the book said, and their eyes was open. And so that is our key verse. And they knew him. Wow. Something has happened to these two men. And in my, this is, I, I can't back it up, but it's like a supernatural conveyance of God's word. But it just seemed like it all hit them at once. And they knew him. And the minute they really recognized him and confirmed, and remember, he's the cardio Noah, and he vanished out of their sight. Wow, how will we react? <laughs> I mean, think about that. And he vanished, but it's because he let them know that he w that was the Passover. I gave you an indication of that. You're going to do the Passover. I just gave it to you. And you did you see it? Now listen now. Here's what I love about this verse. And they said, one to another. Now listen. Did not our heart burn within us? You know, the Lord had me on a, it's what's on the inside that counts. Now at this point, it seemed like God gave them a supernatural transfer. Brought to, you know, brought it all back like the Holy Spirit was supposed to. And they had a burning on the inside. Now, we're talking about the heart now. They got a burning on the inside of their mind and beginning to see things clearer than they ever had before. They were walking with him and didn't know it. <laughs> but now, God began to, to open their heart. Now, he left them now. Then now y'all got to, you know, sort that out for yourself. That's what it's going to say. Whosoever will, let them come. In other words, you've seen enough that instead of being concerned, you know, you're consistent. Realize you are a sinner and you need what? And, and it's very important that our hearts burn within us. Now listen, and I, now they were so busy talking to each other, but he said, while he talked with us, by the way, 
Bible said it's this foolishness called preaching or nothing. Now, in essence, that's what Jesus was doing. Now, we don't know everything he said, but he gave them, well, let's let the book, for Lord have mercy. As we went by the way, and while he opened to us, what did he open up? The scripture. Y'all talking about what happened, what you heard, and what you thought you heard, but now he opened up what? The scripture. Scripture. What, what, what does that mean to us? We must open the scripture. We can't just wait for Sunday morning. Got to open it. Just read sometimes, sometimes. I can't take but you got to open the scriptures. And and the scriptures should be open in front of you the same way Jesus in, in opened up the scriptures to man. We don't want to hear nothing about no poke and beans and black eyed peas. And what grandma did, I want to hear what thus said the Lord. And when we do that, and and listen at this, and they rose up the same hour. Or they start up now and return to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them. They broke it down now, saying, The Lord is risen in peace and has appeared to Simon. We just read that again. I, we read that but a few minutes ago, and that's the point. It can write, it can, hey, he might show him to me, he might show him, but he still has to be something that what? Your heart will burn on the inside. You really, really, really will be more than a person who, who heard about the resurrection. Did you hear me? Who heard about it? You you know it where? In your heart. There's no it's no if ands and but. Uh, hey, you have it. I know it was nice that Peter had it going on, but that ain't gonna help me. I have to see the same. I can't be one just looking in the door and afraid to go in. And what are we saying that? It's a lot of people are afraid to say I'm a Christian. You must be willing to acknowledge him before man. He said if you don't acknowledge me before man, what did he say? I can't acknowledge you. Too many times we look at these things like we heard them so many times, but they have a lot of spiritual significance. Those gentlemen didn't really realize that he's alive until he broke bread. When he broke that bread, their eyes were open. And when their eyes were open, he vanished. You might have some, but why are you vanished? Because he knew at at first time it was, he knew that they had missed the significance of who he was the first time. Think about it. They knew everything about what they thought they heard but they had missed like some of us do the significance of the great thing that happened to mankind that's why I, I when I studied it for myself If you ask somebody what day this is, what's the first thing going to come out of their mouth? Yeah. But it was the Passover. Why was that? 
Yeah, we know that he died for us, but in the midst of all of this, we still got to deal with the fact he said with great desire. Y'all hear what I'm saying? With great desire I have to take this Passover with me before I suffer. Now, that's why we can't just run by this because it was a lot going on, and we're going to get back to the 34th, 33rd, and 34th verse. But it's so important that, that people who just heard about the resurrection is, that's all right, I understand what the, what's going on. But when they finally come to God's house, just like Jesus did this, he opened up the scriptures. He didn't talk about who judge. You know how folks beat up on folks when they, it doesn't. Our job is to open up the scriptures. And just as Jesus opened up the scriptures and, and those scriptures burned in their heart, then they finally, they finally began to not compound the problem like they did before, but their heart was open. And let's see what, we get, we're getting close here to this. Now listen, and they rose up that same hour. Now the word hour represents the hour of temptation. Now they could have, now the, I'm, I'm going to the end time there, and that's in Revelation 20. The hour of temptation. When that old fellow that, that he came to destroy will be standing where he should not be. So that hour, that hour, they moved and they weren't caught up in the hour of temptation. And they returned to Jerusalem. And here's where, and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them. This is a very beautiful verse that we would just take it into our heart. They're saying, the Lord. No doubt about it. He's alive. The Lord is risen. Indeed. No, no question. No doubt about it. I know he's risen. Now, it was, they, they wasn't mixed up and trying to just, just compounding the whole issue with small talk. Ain't you strange? You ain't heard what's going on? No, they knew. But why did they have that total confirmation? What did Jesus do to me? He opened up the scriptures. Every church needs to grab hold of that. It didn't say he opened up the choir. Now, we need the choir. That's part of it. You got a whole bunch of songs in there. But we know that there's certain, and I can't judge any of them, that we know are noted for certain things. You see what I'm saying? That's just life. Now, I can't judge him, and neither can you. But, but just like the Lord asked him in the 17th, what manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? I got to go back. Why are we sad? Why are we just one day a year, maybe two, we <laughs> Christmas, uh, you know, but it doesn't matter what we have to do just like Jesus did to those two men on the Emmaus Road. Open up the scriptures. Too many times we don't like it, but some folks get mad at you. I've had a lot of folks mad at me talking about why you do all them scriptures? Because God told me to. 
Now, folks, some folks think you ain't supposed to have a one. And then the, and the preacher go off and whatever. I can't judge that. But I can use as a shining example as to what can happen if we but do what? Open up the scriptures. And, and it's so important that we grab it because It's not enough that the, that even now the news about Jesus' crucifixion has spread. And it's good, isn't it? But no matter what we say or do, it has to be scripturally based. That's what Jesus is telling us. No matter what kind of garbage people might have in their mind. The only thing that will replace that is scripture. You can't get around that. Now listen, let's go back. Saying, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to shine. And they told what things were done in the way. What was Christians first called? The way. Remember all these little things began to start when the scriptures opened. We were first called in the way. We were first called Christian at Antioch. All this stuff has a meaning. It's wrapped up in here if you open up the scriptures. You'll begin to see just like those two men saw. Maybe we all going through something up. You know how folks are? Hey, it's important that no matter what you're going through, you open up the scripture. Someone read for me Mark 16. 12 and 13. What we got there? If y'all got it, I, I can try to get it, but I believe y'all can get it faster than I can. Mark 13. Mark 16. That's what it says. Now, y'all know I, it popped in my mind. I ain't got no better sense than to call it out. Yeah, that's what it says. And that's the point when brother, everybody get on old Dalton Thomas, didn't they? <laughs> During this time, see, they just had, they hiding out. Uh, you got to remember, so Dalton Thomas, I ain't going to believe unless I can stick my fingers and this, that. But when he finally saw the scriptures themselves, his declaration still rang through time. My Lord. They were in Roman scriptures and they come out. We as his children, Lord have mercy, must begin to, you don't have to talk bling, but you at least be able to open up the scriptures in front of somebody because God will give us I'm going to turn to John 15. I, I think y'all know what 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 I know. We have that, those, those men got that stuff. What he said on the inside, it burned, didn't it? Y'all y'all remember that? <laughs> so I think we, something ought to pop in your spirit at John John 15. Ain't it? That should be. It ought to just pop in your mind. Remember when you said, let's, let's go now. Uh, John 15, 
John 15, let me read it from that. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. These are Hebraism. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he pruneth it, that it may bring forth what? More fruit. Now we got to see clearly why did Jesus open up the scriptures to them? Just listen here. Lord, I get happy. Now, listen now. Can't you see it in them last things when the guy, their eyes were open? He, found, he said, now, Ye are what? Clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Isn't that what happened? Hmm? Am I making this up? Is this not the scripture? You see what I'm saying? He says, now, they asked him to abide with them. But look what he said. Abide in me. <laughs> are you listening? Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye expect you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much but without me, you can do what? Nothing. And that was about as much about nothing as them guys would talk about that you get on. They just beating their gums and talking about nothing. Just letting their lips, you know, like beat them. Just, hey, we have to open the scripture because it is so important that when we open the scripture, people begin to see that without me, I can do it. I can, I, I can play big shot if I want. I, 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 I can tell, uh, I can go along with all the crowd going into uh, 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 Jerusalem. But am I going there to worship or am I going there to be amongst the crowd? Just walking down the road, we talking about things and getting sad because we thought that Jesus would do this. He would whatever. He's already done it. All we got to do is acknowledge the what? The scripture. And it's hard sometimes that it's hard to get people to see. How many of your friends, now what I'm trying to get y'all to see something is don't get caught up in trying to say, and I'm going to say this person, did Jesus do that? He just let them walk and talk and do whatever he wanted to say. And then at the appropriate time, he did something that would stir up the inside. He broke bread, blessed it, and, and gave it to them. And all of a sudden, whoop, their eyes were open. They knew who he was. And a lot of the stuff began to come together. Let's go to John 23 through 7. And we're about getting through for the day, but John 20, we're already over there. We've already covered this, but I want to cover it again so that we can really get the meat of this. Now listen, I want to go up to the top verse where it says, the first day of the week, listen now, 
Thomas Mary Magdalene. We need to know who the woman was that said we covered that. We got to open up the scriptures. But Magdalene, early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus was. We must understand that he loved us while we were yet sinners. And said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Was their rhetoric any different than those two on the Emmaus world? It really is, isn't it? They just think, well, they done took the Lord. But wait, why are you even going there? He told you he would rise. He, he would be risen. Now, Peter therefore went forth that the other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And Stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloth lying, yet went not in. Then came Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeing the linen cloth. But it's seven verses, something about them seven verses sometimes. And the napkin that was about his head, not laying with the linen cloth but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple. He finally came over. I had to, I had to finish that. I didn't want to leave the boy out there like that. Then, they, then went also the other disciple, which came first. Now what should that remind you since the scriptures have been open? There was a father come to him and say, Son, go out there and work in the field. And he said, oh, yeah, I'll go. Then the other one came by. He told us, no, I ain't going. But the other one that said he would go, didn't go. But the one that said he didn't want to go, went. Now, it doesn't matter when you come in. Let's get it together. You must come to him just like you are. You might have some doubt. You might have some unbelief. But, but, but I think about a while ago it said, help my unbelief. Didn't it say something about like that? Said, okay. <laughs> See, it's in the scriptures. Then, then the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher and saw, and what, what else happened to the boy? And what? Believe. Why? Because the was open up to them. Literally, physically, phys you know, physically, he saw and remembered, just like the two on the Emmaus Road, he remembered what Jesus said he was going to do. That's why we must open up the scriptures. A few more verses now, we should go to them. And uh, we know what we, then the disciple went, went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. I said, what did he say? Are y'all thinking that, what did boy, what he say to them boys a few hours ago? Why are y'all sad? You see, I began to it all comes together. Saint, see, God is still going to approach us the same way. As what he, I'm trying to let the Spirit begin to work. She's weeping. Why are you sad? Said them saying, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down. Oh, and looked into the sepulcher. 
But what else pops in there? And CF2 ain't. And waiting in White City, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? What you crying about, baby? <laughs> you don't, uh, look, 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 look. look. Dog hammer. What you weeping about? What weeping about? He said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Okay, listen now. Listen really. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw what? And knew not, sound familiar? <laughs> and knew not that he was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, it was all again. Why weepest thou? Why are you sad? I'm just paraphrasing. Why are you upset? Whom seekest thou? He's supposing him to be the gardener. Uh, uh, that says a whole lot right there, but I ain't going to get it that I just, Lord, have mercy. Lord uh, says unto her, him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. I mean, her heart is broke. I understand that. Jesus said unto her, Mary, <laughs> like he broke that bread, Mary, it had to hear the, the, just the awesome, the, just awesome, I, I get it, Mary. And see, we, we think that that's the only way he, but he'll call your name. He'll call your name. And sometimes we know what we call it. Like that. No. I said, whoa, well, you just have to listen. Listen. I mean, he said just so awesome. He said, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Matt. Or teacher. Jesus said, a lot of folks misinterpret this now. We're getting close to it. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. And when you bring it back, and he said, Don't hold me down now. I'm not, I got to get back to daddy. For I am, I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren. And still folks shouting about no woman can't preach. If Jesus can send her on a mission, I think he can do whatever he wants to do. Come on, somebody else. Lord, my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father. And wait a minute. At the conjunction there. And who? And your Father. And to my God and your God. I got to spend just a little bit. You have here Yahweh the Father. You have Elohim, our Creator. Then the same God that, that put you out of that, just grabbed you out of the dust, blew the breath of life. I'm letting you know, since I have risen, he has become your father. And to my God, and to your God. That's why you hear the preacher say sometimes, 
my big brother Jesus. Or you might say that he is. We have been what? Grafted in. We have been, you might say, adopted. You see what I'm saying? And what happens is we got to see that. I want to get to a few more verses, and I'm through. Listen, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples, we've covered that, she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, beginning the first day of the week, if I want to spend a little time, of the week when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled. Why would it? For fear of Jews. And in essence, the fear of them Kenites. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. For Said, uh, but not, he says, let not what your heart be troubled. And about the same thing. And when he had said, he showed unto them his hand and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they had saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, peace. Be unto you. Why are y'all afraid? Why are you sad? Why are you? As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Now I'm going to quit at the 23rd verse because there's so much wrapped up in this. It says, And when he had said this, what did he do? Three 